morning. Good morning. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He's worth blessing. Amen. Oh my soul. All that is with me. Bless his holy name. Jehovah. Yahweh. Most high. All right. I'm going to leave that up there. Because I'm just going to tell you something. If we're not in this position, which we're defeated. You hear me? Better be grateful for what you do have. Yes. And what's good. And magnify what's good. Yes. Everybody's got stuff they'd rather not have. That's right. Everybody in this room. If you don't, hold on, it's coming. <laughs> Hear me? And the Lord saved us. He saved us, number one, if you're born again, you're not going to hell anymore. Thank you, Lord. I heard an old preacher say, the number one reason I got saved is I didn't want to go to hell. And I thought that's a good start. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And that's your number one start for your thankful heart. Yeah. Lord, we were doomed. Okay. We made a way. Hallelujah. We made a way. Yes. We made covenant with Abraham and carried it through to Israel born again we become seed of Abraham right he made covenant and before Messiah came he gave them a way to cover their sins right before Yeshua Jesus of Nazareth came he gave them a way with an animal sacrifice God always knew they couldn't do it <laughs> we don't talk about the law the law teaches you what's right and wrong that's right it's wonderful David, I mean, uh, Paul said it's holy. It's good to know what's right and wrong. Amen. I heard somebody say, really, what's right and wrong, y'all know such. You see, when you're a kid, they have to tell you as a man to lift the toilet seat, okay? As a little boy, lift the toilet seat. And maybe mom put a note on there. Right, lift the toilet seat. Well, you're about seven or eight years old. You probably don't need the note anymore. Hear me? So there are things that we're supposed to learn that are really the milk of God's Word. The milk of God's Word is being obedient. You get that? That's milk. I always tell people, every moral law of God still exists. It ain't okay to murder. not okay to dishonor your parents. It's not okay to covet. It's not okay. Those are sin, and, and sin is transgression of the law. So all of God's moral commandments still exist. And this really thing is made difficult by humans and religion. I'm just telling you, if you purpose in your heart to obey God, and you have to have His grace to do it, none of us can do it without the grace of God. None of us. But when you get born again and you purpose in your heart, He puts His law in your heart. I want to be obedient because I love Him. See, it's, it, the word says, if you, Jesus said, if you love me, you obey my commandments. But I, I want you to, that, that you can look at that two ways. One of them is you're proving you love me by obeying my commandments. But I'm going to tell you that the truth is you have to love him in order to obey. Uh, it has to be about your grateful heart and, and a thankful heart in order to allow His love to flow in so that you can even begin to walk in His grace and obey. He wants to. All the things that He wants to accomplish in your life, you cannot do without Him. But He won't do it without you either. It's a two-way street. It's two walking together. Amos 3.3. 3. How do two walk together unless they be agreed? Say, Lord, Lord, if you will say, I don't want to command you that. It's a, it's a, a prompting. Lord, 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 I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you. I want to walk in agreement with you. I want to walk in agreement with you. I ask you to show me. I ask you to show me. Anywhere in my heart. Anywhere in my heart. I'm not in agreement. I'm not in agreement. Any place. Any place. You're walking one way. You're walking one way. And I'm walking another. And I'm walking another. I give you permission. I give you permission. To show me. Show me. And I ask you. And I ask you. 
to help me to walk in your way. In Jesus' name. So, number one place of thankfulness is you're not going to hell anymore. That God, the Father, so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. Amen? That while we were yet sinners, He died for us. Isn't that glorious? But there's a yet sinners that, that means that if you're born again, you went from a place of being a sinner to a saint. Set apart, capable of sinning. There's a difference. One of them is somebody that doesn't give a hoot. They may have a measure of conscience still if it hasn't been seared or has, haven't been trained up so badly. Right? The other is now a person that's born again with the uh, Holy Spirit within who now should not want to sin and should not practice sin. Amen? Amen. Say, Lord, Lord, let me be one who does not practice sin, that hates sin, loves people, hates sin, loves myself, but most of all, is able to love you and receive love from you. Now, for everybody in this room, and anybody listening, they're listening through some form of technology in the days to come. Listen, um, you got shoes, socks, shower, food, shelter. We've got three quarters of the world doesn't have what we have. Some of the meals, I mean, we've seen a degradation of, say, quality of food in restaurants. Right? And we're eating in restaurants. Some people can't. Right? But I've seen the degradation of the quality of food. And I had one meal we ate it, and I told Callie, I said, you know, I said, there, we're kind of grumbling about that. And I said, there are people who would have fed a family of six with that and been delighted. Yeah, right. Right. Thank God for what is right. and what's good. Resist the enemy and what's bad. Amen? Amen. But you'll never be able to resist your enemy with an ungrateful heart. Okay? Never. Say, Lord, Lord if I've been unthankful, if I've been unthankful ungrateful, ungrateful, a grumbler, a, grumbler, a, complainer, a complainer, forgive me. Forgive me. I, appreciate I appreciate what you've given me. And Lord, if I've coveted what anybody else has, I ask you to forgive me. Amen. That would be what I call a bonus because it wasn't what was going to be taught. But it's a good place to start. Amen. Amen. Now let's just take a deep breath. Every spirit of ungratefulness and grumbling and complaint and unthankfulness, come on, get out in the name of Jesus. Why God, why God, why God? Come on, get out of there. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know, the enemy is so subtle, he can get you into a place of a subconscious accusation against God and the very thing you're praying for and that you want desperately that he will do one day. You are cutting it off at the pass with your accusation in your heart against God. Against him. He is unchargeable. Say, Lord, Lord, if I have any charge, have any charge against, you, against you, even in my subconscious mind, if, subconscious if I blame you, you for what people have done, done what the enemy has done, enemy for what I've done to myself, I ask you to forgive me. And I break that curse, even the curse of the Antichrist that would blame you. Because you're good, Lord. And I command these spirits in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. You would let them go. Let them go. Come on. Go, 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 go. Get on out here in the name of Jesus. We don't have time for you. Get out in the name of Jesus. These are thankful people. These are grateful people. They love you, Lord. They love you. 
I gave a ministry here one time on a Thanksgiving day about thankfulness on a closing Sunday. <coughs> Went home, had a power pole knocked down within a short time, had a tornado knock down a place and within six months, had a, had a emergency appendectomy surgery that cost me a part of my colon and uh, all of those things. I mean, we got whack, 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 whack. Well, we stay thankful. I'm thankful to be alive. Amen. And he did me more than what God took. I don't have time to go in full and see why that tornado hit our place, but it wasn't God's fault. Just say that. Amen. He has given more. I'm sorry. Can you please move the microphone closer to you because they, I can. they can't hear you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Can y'all hear me now? Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. We're going to talk about the spirit of Jezebel. We're going to call this teaching Destroying Jezebel. It will talk about the roots, the effect, and the remedy. Everybody say, I don't like Jezebel. I don't like Jezebel. Jezebel doesn't like me. Jezebel. Amen? Amen. You know, I love our nation. I wept at some of those songs. I really did. Even, you know, especially that they invokes the Lord. Yeah. And our nation, we're supposed to love our nation. We're supposed to love people. And, and really, we're, you know, Jeremiah loved his nation. But if you read Lamentations, he's reading about Jerusalem. He is, Lord, this is bad. What's going on here? He's weeping. He was called the weeping prophet. Right. We want the Lord's mercy here, and we need the Lord's mercy. And, you know, these states as a whole begin to, all the will, pick up the cup of banning that abortion. There's a good possibility that we might get a stay of execution. Hear me? Right. Hear me? Yes. 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 Now, we're not going to stop the Antichrist from coming. <laughs> That's God's timetable. It's coming when it comes, period. Right. None of us know that. And even the elite, the Illuminati, the powers that be, they're running all their plays. They're doing all that they're doing. We're all seeing it before our eyes, but they don't get to decide <laughs> when God lifts the restrainer and the Antichrist shows up. God does. We're here to fight in the meantime. But I am going to tell you, and it's been said here before, there's going to be discernment needed in the days and times to come. Anybody in this room that's got any reserve about what you don't want to give to God, uh, you better give it up. That's right. Just tell it. That's right. Well, the assault on your minds, the assault by technology, the demonic assault is going to be the greatest that's ever happened on the earth short of pre-flood. Okay? when the fallen ones were here. The sons of God took the daughters of men for wives. and There were giants in the land. The things that are called gods by the Greeks and the Romans and all that were here on the earth. Jesus said it would be like the days of Noah when he returns. Amen? I'm not saying that to scare you. Unless you need to be scared to get it right. <laughs> If you need to be scared and get right and get scared. There's a better way. Just love God. Be thankful. Amen? We've got to get rid of stuff. If you've got anything in your pocket that you're holding on to, you better empty your pockets. If you have anything in you that wants to play with the things of the world. Sister warned last night about things like Minecraft and you know, and I gave you testimony. I mean, I don't think it was uh, by chance or accident, which I don't believe in anyway. But I don't believe that we had the encounter with a girl whose eyes were rolling back of her head that was a godly woman of God and raised by godly people but playing some game that seemed innocent. Right? Right. Occultic demons manifesting in her and then sister comes and brings a warning. You better test everything. You know, if you've got children and you're going to hand them that electronic piece, you better play the game Amen. to see what it is. Right. Do the research. Even better yet, get on Google, do the research. Here, here, easy way. I don't even use Google. I use DuckDuckGo, but anyway. Because so, Google will choke stuff down. You follow me? There's a lot of things you won't find. 
because they bury it or mm -hmm. you don't find it. Well, you know, there's they other. Don't want you to see. They don't want you to see. There's other search engines, mm -hmm. but it's real simple. Just put demonic Minecraft. <laughs> right? Right. So, demonic the witchcraft in mm -hmm. and put the label. Whatever you gotta search, you'll find it. Stuff will come up. Most often times in that game, you'll end up with a blog from all the people that play the games that start talking about the characters mm -hmm. and what they're doing and the power <clears throat> and it's wicked as it can be. Beyond. She didn't even touch the surface, did you, sis? She held back because of the children. Say, Lord, Lord, I'm going to be a digger. I'm going to be a digger. I'm going to dig for gold. I'm going to dig for gold. In the Word of God. In the Word of God. And I'm going to search things. I'm going to search things. To keep the leaven out of my house. To keep the leaven out of my house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, the first and number one test is the Holy Spirit show me. Right? But sometimes you might have a person find information so you can share with somebody else. They might not have that relationship that we're supposed to. Amen? Amen. So Jezebel. There are two Jezebels in the Bible. The first one's found in the Old Testament. The second one's found in the New Testament. Jezebel, the Old Testament, the first time she occurs in the Bible is when she's getting married to King Ahab. Everybody said, poor King Ahab. Mm -hmm. poor King Ahab. <laughs> he was the best too. Yeah. <laughs> he was a real man. <laughs> and Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And it came about as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Then he married Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, which means king of the Sidonians, and went to serve Baal and worshipped him. 1 Kings 16, 30 and 31. She was an evil woman who killed many prophets of God while feeding and caring for the prophets of two gods called Baal and Asherah. Baal, Asherah. Freemasonry is still mixed up in Baal and Asherah. And Baal and Asherah are two, they, they really, so you had in Babel, Nimrod, Semiramis, Tammuz, okay? Nimrod, Semiramis, his wife, Tammuz, their child. And out of them came Baal worship, Asherah worship, Baal being the male, Asherah the female. Out of them also came Osiris, Isis, and Horus of the Egyptians. Okay? Say, I don't like those. I renounce Baal and Asherah. By any name. By any name. Any culture. Any culture. 1 Kings 18, 20-46, Ahab, Elijah, and 450 prophets gathered to see who is God. Elijah puts it simply. He's talking to Israel. I put it to you today. How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal, follow Him. See, body of Christ, Children of the living God. You can't play with darkness. You can't do it. Amen. And, and be safe. Amen, amen. You can't do it and be in fellowship with God. It is the mixture that always kills. Israel would do wonderful worshiping God and then they'd start turning and messing around with these other gods and they would end up being whipped every time. Everybody in this room, I have to say, has had that happen to them. When you took your eyes off of the Lord and you began to follow, and that doesn't mean you're bowing down to God. It could be you're bowing down to anger, bowing down to fear, bowing down to drug use, bowing down to what's on the TV. We're worshiping something. What followed was a one-sided contest. The followers of Baal prepared a sacrifice but Baal never sent fire to consume the sacrifice, even though the prophets of Baal were pleading all day, Oh, Baal, answer us. They cut themselves with swords. They were bloodletting in order to invoke their gods. Still happens today. Never. Baal never responded. 
Finally, Elijah poured water on his sacrifice three times. It's kind of funny because if you go back and look at the original context, he said what he, he asked those prophets said, What is he using the bathroom? Where's he at? Where's your God? Elijah prayed and God sent fire from heaven to consume his sacrifice. Elijah killed the prophets of Baal, 1 Kings 18.40. But then it says Jezebel sought to kill Elijah, 1 Kings 19, 1 and 2. In 1 Kings 21, 5 through 25, Jezebel had Naboth, the Jezreelite, killed so that her husband could own Naboth's vineyard. What a wicked woman. Eventually, she was trampled to death by horses. I want to say something. You know, here's Elijah, this mighty man of God. What a believer. Miracle after miracle he did. Just killed these prophets of Baal, right? Just kill them. Just have them. I mean, you know, God come set the fire down. Elijah killed them. So they were killed. Destroyed. A showdown. And the next thing you know, he's hiding in a cave because Jezebel says she's going to kill him. Hmm? The spirit of Jezebel, and I'll read this later, is an intimidator. It intimidates people. Eventually, the eunuchs threw Jezebel down, 2 Kings 9, 30, 37. It, she was killed, thrown down from her tower. And the dogs there. In the New Testament, it's used for a woman in Revelation 2, 18 through 29. Here Jezebel is described as a prophetess, a false teacher, an immoral woman, and an idol woman, woman, an idol worshiper. She attended a church at Thyatira. She encouraged those who intended the church to engage in sexual sin and worship other gods. The word says that she brought idolatry and immorality into the church. Here's the words of Jesus. But I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and leads my bondservants astray, so that they eat things sacrificed to idols, they commit acts of immorality, and I gave her time to repent, and she does not want to repent of her immorality. See, the Lord is good. So here's this woman calling herself a prophetess. He didn't say she's a prophetess. He said she called herself a prophetess. But she was being received as a prophetess. And she brought in immorality and idolatry into those people. And yet the Lord says he's given her a space to repent. Say, Lord, thank you. You've given me space to repent. Amen. She was like the Jezebel in the Old Testament. They shared many of the same characteristics. God warned this Jezebel he'd punish her if she did not stop teaching this evil and repent. He not only warned her, the, the teacher, he warned her followers to stop and repent. Here's the word. I will kill her children with pestilence and all the churches will know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts and I will give to each of you according to your deeds. Now, in other version it says he threw the children on a sick bed. Okay? The Jezebel spirit is a spirit undergirded, listen, by rejection, rebellion, anger, control and fear of losing control. There are reasons and roots for this stronghold. Nobody operates, and by the way, you know, our examples of the biblical characters are female. This spirit works in males, works in females. It, an equal opportunity destroyer. Okay? Babies are born to be normal, loving beings. We need to examine why anyone like a Jezebel would turn evil or be open to an evil presence. Why things dominate their thinking. The scripture says we do not war against flesh and blood, but against the powers, the principalities, the evil spirits, and the wicked spirits in high places, the rulers of darkness in this world, right? We have to remember that Jezebel is a spirit that infects people 
who are victims. So listen, as we go on teaching these characteristics, don't be looking at your neighbor going, it looks like you. <laughs> oh, that's what this is. Listen to me. You know the way you combat something to help somebody else? Is you get rid of what you have in common. You hear me? If this thing exists. It causes a lot of damage. And I would actually tell you there's kind of a picture of it in New York Harbor. Called the Statue of Liberty. That's right. Okay. Because there's some goddesses that begin to be worshipped called Artemis and Diana that have the same characteristics and they want human sacrifice. And I mean, it goes on and on. But that statue is both male and female. This is a bonus. It's both male and female. Well, I love our nation. I don't love that statue. And I don't love the, the Washington Monument, which is a male. Okay. I don't love any of that. And I'm looking for the day God knocks it all down. Because he would. Okay? Well, we got to be real about what we're facing. So right there in that harbor is what's called, it is a representation of this nation accepted by most that is both a male and female. It's Apollo. It is Artemis. It represents gods and goddesses that accept sacrifice, human sacrifice. Do, have we had a blood sacrifice problem in this nation called abortion? Have we had a sexual problem? They, in so all Artemis, Diana, they had temple prostitutes. So you go sleep with the prostitute and become a, one with the God. Okay. Have we had a sexual problem? Have we had an idolatry problem? Have we had a murder problem? A sacrifice of children problem? And are we now having an insane gender identity problem? Yes. Yes. First, it's important to control the rest of the damage that the infected person is creating. But we should not stop there. We should examine the roots of the problem with the person and help deliver them out of this situation if possible. Say, Lord, if any of what gets described is something I've done, that I'm doing, I want it exposed, I want to be convicted, I want it out of me, and I want to be healed. In Jesus' name. If we get to the root of why someone has the Jezebel spirit, we may be able to help free them from that overpowering influence. Help them to recover. Otherwise, the salvation and eternal destiny of their souls is at stake. Common doorways that let Jezebel in a family line are abandonment of a father, either literally or spiritually, even by playing the role of Ahab to a dominant mother with loss of spiritual and physical protection. Especially in America in the last 50 years, the absence of the father in the home is not just economic. A little child, a girl especially, needs to have a strong male image that teaches her that she is valuable, that she is loved, that she is protected. When this male covering is gone, their life seems out of control and hurtful. The child will immediately go into a mode of self-protection. Learning ways to control its environment to avoid further pain. The mother may seem inadequate in some cases, and the child may see the mother as the one who sent daddy away, and therefore responsible for her pain. If the mother is a traditional stay-at-home mom, then the child learns the mother cannot protect her as they feel needed, and they grow up viewing traditional women as weak and incompetent. The mother was not good enough to keep her man. Jezebel, like all other spirits, can run in family lines, long lines of upside-down female-dominated families, which is contrary to the Father God's order. If the mother is abusive, then this makes women the enemy. If the mother is a liberated woman, in a liberal sense, the child learns that only women are powerful. God has an order, and when we get out of his order, we have trouble. We have trouble. That Ahab spirit, here's the deal. If mama dominates, if the wife dominates, if mama's going to dominate, what will often happen is that dad will go work, and if he can get the overtime, he'll stay away from home all he can. Right? Because Jezebel, listen to me, is a goddess of war. And, and, and there's always going to be a war. 
and you're in a constant state of appeasement of the person, okay? Male or female, I'm just describing typical husband-wife situations, so, so understand me, all right? So that husband who becomes an Ahab, so Ahab let his wife do everything, right? He, she, he's over here crying over that vineyard. She says, I'll take care of it, and goes and has a man killed. So listen to me. So the husband will come home, and if he's not a man that can go stay away at work, when he comes home from work, he'll be piddling out in the garage or outside somewhere until, <laughs> until it's time to go to bed. Because he's just going to abdicate and stay away. And every question the children ask, now listen, parents should say, have you, listen, they come and ask the father, have you talked to your mother to make sure the kids aren't doing the circle? And the mom should say, have you talked to you, you know, that the kids aren't playing you? Right? How many no kids will play? Okay. We're born with that, right? You don't even have to teach them. I'll fall short, the glory of God. So, so, but what will happen is, is that Ahab father will never make a decision. It will always be the default. You follow me? Only women, if the child learns, if the, if the mother's liberated woman, then in the liberal sense, the child learns that only women are powerful and only they should be trusted and bonded with. If the mother has values that are against traditional moral values, then the child will end up on a slippery slope into lesbianism or homosexuality. If daddy seems to make it known that he left for another woman, that he openly expresses his interpretation and value and love as sexual, then the child will learn that that's the way you get love. It is sex that will get attention. The lesson will be transferred to other men that a girl will want to be involved with. The child will look for love in all the wrong places and will use sex, not love, to lure others. Since they do not know what true godly love from a male figure is really like. There could be child abuse, sexual, verbal, physical, it is, and if it's sexual, it's intimate, it has permanent consequences. The National Center on Child Abuse and Neglect compiles data about the number of cases reported to CPS each year, but the fact is the number of cases is small compared with what's actually reported. You can't trust the government anyway, but I guarantee you they're giving you a snippet of what, what is real. People that are abused by people in their family are told in some way or another there's an, often an intimidator that says don't say anything to anybody. The trauma from the abuse can cause amnesia as a coping mechanism or work in a replay and lifelong torment. Abuse begets abuse and will quite often carry on to the victim's children. Only the love and power of Jesus Christ can destroy this cycle. Take a look at these statistics from the counseling world. I'm sure it's greater than what's on this paper. 1,500 children die from abuse each year. 140,000 injuries to children from abuse this year, each year. About one in four women in North America were molested in childhood. I can almost guarantee you from what we've seen that it's more than that. More than 2 million cases of child abuse and neglect are reported each year in the United States and an estimated 150,200 new cases of sexual abuse occur each year. Approximately 1 in 7 males will have been sexually molested before the age of 18. Most of these homosex of homosexual people were molested as children, especially the men. Okay. And when they got molested as a little child, then the demons of homosexuality jump on them. And there's often times that a person gets born again and they're sitting there with the torment of homosexual thoughts knowing it's wrong. And because my people perish or are destroyed for lack of knowledge, these poor people are trying to sort out what in the world just happened. Why, why am I thinking like this? What's wrong with me? And nobody knows it's demons. The people don't know it's demons. The Lord came to set the captive free. Amen? Yes. Never, never ever get caught in the position of judging those people 
as and if it couldn't be you. Because by the grace of God, you didn't get what they got. Amen? So we don't say it's right. It's not right. It'll destroy you. But we better have some compassion to intercede for people. Right? If we do that, then we might there might be a plucking of this one and a plucking of that one and a plucking of this one out of the hands of the snake. Amen? Out of his mouth. So there can be disturbances in sexual interests, difficulties during what should be functional between husband and wife, dysfunctions of desire. Everything can be impacted in one way driven and the one way driven away. There's confusion of sexuality, self-destructive behavior, relationship problems. The doors to the Jezebel spirit are now being opened through these things. She is known by many of these traits. The abused child will understand sex as physical stimulation and will disassociate love, intimacy, and trust from the experience. Others become objects of stimulation and gratification. There's no place for a real relationship because they don't understand what one is. When you have the Ahab father and a Jezebel mother, children get their identity from their parents who are role models. Listen, the marriage is supposed to be a picture of Jesus in the church. Right? So Jesus loves the church, laid down his life for it. So a husband is supposed to lay down his life for his wife. It's a sacrificial love. Amen? He's supposed to honor her. Dwell with her in knowledge. So he's supposed to, I'm speaking to husbands. Now if you're a wife, don't be looking at your husband and go, I wish you did all that. <laughs> your turn's coming. Okay. I mean, seriously. I got my role. I'm not, I'm not even responsible for what my wife's role is. I'm responsible to pray for her, but I'm responsible to be her husband. And that means, and I'm also called to dwell with her as, as the weaker vessel. That doesn't mean she's always weaker. There are times she may be stronger, but when she's weak, I'm supposed to stand in it. I'm supposed to guard her from the snake. I'm supposed to guard her. There are times that I don't want to do stuff in my flesh, but I do it anyway because I love her. I lay down my life. I don't always do everything right, but I know what I'm supposed to. I try to do when I don't do well. I tell God I'm sorry, and I tell her I'm sorry. Amen? Amen. All right? So, now wife, you're supposed to respect your husband like Sarah did Abraham. And even lost men... According to the book of Peter, I believe 1 3, says they can be won through the wives' chaste conversation. That means being nice with your mouth. And if you do that, you'll never, listen, daughters, you'll never nag your man into doing anything right. Ever. He won't do it. He just won't. The more mature he gets, then the more you just pray, God will talk to him, he'll straighten up, okay? Right. In the meantime, you start lifting things up to God, but when you're talking to somebody, you will never tell them what to do and have it be done unless they're a complete Ahab and then you'll hate them anyway. Yeah. Amen? You pray. You talk nice. You over it. If you could, listen, if a wife could win a lost husband through kind conversation, how much more could kind conversation from a wife work with a godly man? who just needs God to speak to them. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus and the church. So the marriage is supposed to look like Jesus and His church. Here's Jesus. He's the head of the church. He gave His life for the church. He loves His people. And here's His church that willingly says, Here I am, Lord. I'll go where you go. <clears throat> I yield to you. That's what it's supposed to look like. How many grew up with marriages... That our parents look like that. Very few. So sometimes we need to say a prayer and it goes like this if you want to say it with me. Yeah. 
I'm just going to tell you in advance. Lord, I ask you to replace the image of marriage that I saw from my parents with the image of Jesus and his church. Say, Lord, Lord, I exchange the image that I saw of marriage from my parents for the image of Jesus and his church. Thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen? In both abandonment and abuse, there's a lot of anger, rage, and bitterness. There are memories that have never healed and a person cannot forgive in their past. This unforgiveness subconsciously motivates every decision made regarding relationship. Trust is gone and the person may hold suspicion of everyone that resembles those that betrayed them from an earlier time. The younger and more vulnerable the child is when things go wrong and the more repeated the injury, the angrier the adult will become. This anger at the past that was out of control for them will be channeled into controlling everything in their present future. If you've got a control problem, say, I'm sorry. Control is fear. It means I have to, I have, to have my hand on this. So there's no peace in it either. There's no peace in it. The unforgiveness acts as a self-defense mechanism since they're acting to prevent further injury, making sure to hurt others. Abusive relationships in adulthood. If the abusive adult relationships reinforce the childhood abuse, the more deeply ingrains the this more deeply ingrains the Jezebel spirit that has infected the person. Stated earlier, abuse begets abuse. Somebody Listen, and I'm going to just tell you, people that get bullied, often they got an inherited spirit from their bloodline because their ancestors bullied somebody. Alright? So you, there's a law of sowing and reaping. That unless it's repented for and broke, so your ancestors could have bullied somebody, and now all of a sudden you were born and you've got a spirit that draws the bully. Or you are a bully. We break that. Say, Lord, Lord, I forgive everyone that abused me, that, that I forgive, even my ancestors, that abused other people, that bullied other people. And Lord, I, I forgive myself for being a bully. I break the power of the bully and the spirit that draws the bully. I separate that from the rejection and command both spirits to go. All three. Rejection, bully, and that that draws the bully. Take a deep breath, get out in the name of Jesus. Come on, go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus, let him go. Let him go. Thank you, Father. And I'm going to tell you something. You deeply rejected. I'm telling you because there's most people are not walking with the Lord, and they're not walking in understanding, and they're not walking in power. So a person can bring along this spirit that's got that bully, the one that draws the bully with them, that's full of rejection, and they can get around somebody that never bullied somebody in their life, but all of a sudden this spirit in that person will come and activate. And the person that's got the bully, the spirit that draws the bully, will say words that the enemy puts in their mouth to provoke this one over here to, to bully them. And that cycle just goes on and on and on and on until it's broken by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Say, Lord, Lord, thank you for breaking these cycles off of my life and even my bloodline. So the demons know full well how to steer an already broken person into another train wreck. You get me? Some marriages are train wrecked because <laughs> they ain't led by God. They weren't pointing to God and the enemy puts two train, I mean, headlong into the tunnel for a big crash. Amen? Have you seen it? Has anybody seen it? All right. 
Lack of general moral values in a home growing up are early social influences outside the home which contradict morality. If there are no moral values taught in the home as to right and wrong, then any value set can arise, which is totally demonic and antisocial. The outside influences include schools, teachers, classmates who may come from non-ethical backgrounds. If teachers, for example, usurp the authority of parents and teachers' values contrary to the moral values of the home, <coughs> then the parents can be undermined and the child can get out of control and turn into a nightmare for the parents. Listen, you got children? If you have to send them to public school, you better check out every day what's going on. Now, every day when they come home, you need to sit down and have a deliverance. Hear me? You, and and you, I pray that you're brave enough if, if that's the case. If they have to go, you don't know why there's a better way. There's a better way possible for you. But that school, those school systems, even the best, are full of godless stuff. And they're watching all sorts of movies. You've got to be brave to draw the line for your children and say, we don't watch those things. Teach your children to tell you and then come to their defense. Say, I want my child doing something else that day. If, if that's, I'm serious. Yeah, and you, you really do. Okay? You need to have a deliverance service every day when they come home. Unless that, you know, if they got a teacher you know is walking lockstep with you, that's one thing, but, it, but that's not very frequent. A good example is teaching that homosexuality is acceptable to children as an alternative lifestyle. In our little town of Poto, Oklahoma, they just had a drag queen festival and play, huh? in which they people were, we, we went just sat on the corner and prayed. Hmm? And prayed. We didn't assault those people. That wouldn't have been profitable. We, we figured the next time is in the middle of the summer, we're going to have a, a, a cooler full of water, an offer of water when they come by, right? But these people were dragging their children to the sacrifice. Lost people, undone people, confused people taking their children into the confusion. It was sad. This moral corruption of children will lead to apparent behavior later, especially since they're being taught that their parents' morals are a lie and they can rebel against the parents if they wish to. Early influence include that from the media where immorality and violence is celebrated. Any child who learns early on that there is no God or morals and there is no one to answer for their behavior ends up creating their own rules. Anybody here ever create your own rules? The do what you want attitude is godless and can lead to anything, even murder. Abuse, abandonment, misuse of authority all contribute to forming the personality dominated by Jezebel, like behavior. A believer influenced by Jezebel's spirit may not intend to destroy a family or church. However, individuals who operate in varying levels of rebellion and witchcraft have destroyed many families and many churches. It is, always, it is able to work through an individual who tries to take control. Manipulation and control is strengthened with each successful control of another person. Their self-pity and pride in individual soul is endangered by deeper demonization. This type of witchcraft can be performed without occult involvement. They don't have to work rocks or feathers or charms or berry bones or do powders or do all the things that practitioners of witchcraft do. They don't even have to sit and do visualization. We bind all of that work right now in the name of Jesus yes. and any others. All right? They don't have to sit and do visualization, which uh, people do, and we bind that in the name of Jesus. Okay? They do it through their behavior, manipulating through behavior, manipulating through words, manipulating through deeds. Sometimes manipulated through the cold stare of Jezebel's intimidator. Comes through the eye. Occult involvement means something hidden, right? So all of this is up front in human behavior. It's it's not. It's, it's, it's not working the ritual. People who operate in more mature forms of witchcraft are determined to impose their will no matter what moral cost. In the case of Jezebel, her use of manipulative control resorted in murder. She had a man murdered. Yahweh, our father, hates witchcraft. Now, I will tell you, 
that I, I would tell you 100% that every single person working that other witchcraft, working ritual witchcraft, working magic, okay, looking for other gods for control and power, all right, and answer. Every single one of them is infected with Jezebel. Okay? They've just gone into another realm. Our Abba Father hates witchcraft and hinders relationships in which honesty is vital. Since witchcraft violates the will of others and their ability to choose, it greatly damages a husband-wife relationship. It's destructive in parent-child relationships and relationships with other family members. In situations in which conflict arises, those who operate in this spirit refuse to communicate truthfully, and sometimes not at all. If a guy's, listen, so we deal with Je Jezebel and Ahab here, so if a, if a person's operating in Ahab, you know what they do? Their control is they get mad and they go hide and don't talk to you for a day or two or three or a week. They pout. How, how many know? <laughs> so I don't want to be this person. <laughs> that everybody around me everybody knows around me. when I'm not happy. Some people, really, they might as well put a big old sign up that says, I'm not happy. It's right here. I'm not happy. <laughs> you all need to know I'm not happy. <laughs> I mean, I'm making it funny, but it's hurting people doing things that are hurting people. They employ artful, unfair, and insidious means to gain advantage and achieve their goals, thinking their cause justifies their actions. A root of bitterness develops. Rejection begets bitterness. Bitterness begets rebellion. Rejection is one of Satan's most effective forms of oppression. Rejection may keep a sinner from coming to God for salvation and a Christian from reaching his or her full potential in God and it undermines, breaks, and prevents normal and harmonious relations between family members, marriage partners, fellow workers, and friends. It distorts our image of God as a loving Heavenly Father who loves us and who wants only the best for us. Here's the dictionary definition of rejection. It is the act of throwing away or discarding someone or something. It implies a lack of value in the person or thing being thrown away. When you're rejecting someone, you're saying they have no value. In your own mind, now listen. When we get healed enough, listen, somebody can decide I don't have any value to them, but I'm not going to agree with them. I got a value to Jesus. My value, your value, is in the cross of Calvary. What he paid. Right? You're never going to please everybody. If you're a people pleaser, say, I'm sorry. Listen, you, can, you just can't do it. Huh? And you can't be devastated when somebody decides they don't love you or like you. Huh? I'm not telling you that you become uh, 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 numb. We deal with things. Listen, so you can have temporary hurts that aren't permanent disabilities. Hear me? Do you get that? A temporary hurt that's not a permanent disability. Well, yeah, the rejection hurts, but it, I'm not going to let it cripple me, and I'm not going to let your rejection of me cause me to reject the next person not be able to love them because I'm afraid of being rejected. Amen? Being denied love is at the root of rejection. Rejection, whether active or passive, real or imaginary, robs Jesus Christ of His rightful position as Lord in the lives of His children and keeps believers from experiencing the vitality and quality of life that He alone can give. He never rejects he, he, he doesn't like our behavior. He doesn't like our behavior. There's no doubt about that. He, sin is sin. He hates sin. He has a penalty to sin, but he, and, and, and the penalty for sin is death. Right? But He sent the answer for us that we don't have to experience the second death. Amen? That's how much He loves us. But you can feel so rejected from humans that you won't allow God to love you. 
You well, let's say you won't receive His love. Amen. Rejection results in wounding of the heart, sometimes so painful the mind refuses to deal with it. So we bury it in our subconscious. Later it surfaces in other ways to cause us problems. Rejection is the greatest undiagnosed and most untreated malady in the body of Christ, in my opinion. There's so many things. That rejection tree back there, everybody ought to take a look at it. Take a picture of it. There's a lot to it. It shows you the roots. So a lot of times people are plucking off the drug use and they're plucking off the fruit all up to the top of that tree, but it all goes down to the roots. And unless you don't get the roots, that fruit just comes back in a short time. Hebrews 12, 15, looking diligently, lest any fall short of the grace of God, and lest any root of bitterness springing up disturb you, and by it many are defiled. Bitterness in one of us can cause a lot of people to be defiled cause a lot of damage to a lot of people. It brings rebellion in all its forms. It has several roots. One is bitterness. Bitterness opens the door by which the Jairus Bell spirit slithers into a person's soul undetected. Bitterness often takes hold in our lives when we feel we're being overlooked for recognition or honor. It can happen when a child is told, why can't you be like your sister? I wish you'd act like your brother. Hmm? Why can't you be by little Johnny over here? Self-pity sets in. People knowingly or unknowingly begin to seek ways of getting attention to display the gift they believe they have. Bitterness resides in our soul because it's a mental stronghold linked to selfishness and pride. Bitterness may be directed towards God or anyone whom God endows with authority. Since bitterness often is a reaction to a perceived injustice or to unjust authority, it will provoke a person to react against all authority. Bitterness brings despair. Since bitterness is tied to pride, this despair will drive people to design schemes that promote their gifts. A wounded prophet is a dangerous one. Not that a prophet's not going to get wounded, but a prophet that doesn't deal with the wounds. So do you understand that? Because then what will happen is somebody that truly has a gift of prophecy will give a prophetic word because they need you to need them as a prophet. So ministry can get perverted. Any ministry. If we're not healed, and while you'll get your identity from what you're doing instead of what he's done. So therefore, so, so the enemy is able to come and some have a gift of mercy. And in that gift of mercy, they want to help people. And there's a gift there, and that's a good gift, but yet it should be directed by God. But if a person's got a wound, they'll give to people that it's not helping them, it's enabling them. Yeah. You get that? Yeah. But when you've got your heart healed and you're able to walk with the Holy Spirit and walk with Him and know what to do where, and you listen to Him, you're not going to go giving unto people so you feel good. You're going to give because it's what God wants you to do. Or not give because it's what God wants you to do. Right. Say, Lord, I need healing. Lord, I need healing. Wherever, I need healing. Wherever I need healing, I give you permission, give you permission. to do the work. <clears throat> bitterness is truly sinful it deeply damages people and leads to lawlessness rebellion, lawlessness as with all sin, bitterness must be recognized repented of and healed through God's spirit it brings sour fruit a root of bitterness is contagious it can infect many other people the cross of Jesus is the stopping point for bitterness he is the great physician that can deliver us from demonic torment. His anointing alone turns us from our rebellious ways. There's a, a song, and we were listening to it on the way here, and it, and it says, Your Forgiveness. And, and in that song it says, Your grace is the only thing that ever makes me want to change. Hmm? You get that? The Bible says men are drawn to repentance by His goodness. At the end, at the, the real reality is 
Is it some of those people that the mercy gift will be exploited to try to help them when the, especially that mercy gift doesn't isn't healed, that person with that gift? Those very people you're helping to, to keep them propped up in their junk when God wants them to crash so they'll go, oh God, I need you so He can come fix them. Say, if you've done that, say, Lord, forgive me for helping people that I should not have helped. I give them to you, Lord. A bitter, rebellious heart can be transformed into a grateful, obedient heart. And it is touched by the grace of God. After such deliverance, the person must decide to submit to God-given authority. Submission is a decision rather than a feeling which an individual makes. A continual practice of submission will produce meekness. You know, sometimes I've told people that are on, on having drug problems, they need to go to Christian rehabs, but one of the most important things they can do is just go sit and be told what to do for a year without fighting. I mean, simply, that doesn't mean that I tell them, that doesn't mean everybody's going to be right there. I mean, a lot of people messed up. But you, every day, you forgive quickly, you repent quickly, and when they tell you what to do, unless they're telling you sin, do it without grumbling. Right? Because right. we're rebellious. Varying levels of rebellion is the problem of man. Right? Everybody here been rebellious? Amen. Deborah, I got the quiet ones out here today. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's up here. She just I wish I had a church in here. <laughs> Bless the Lord. It's a sobering message, but it's a reality. I, I'm, you know, we're not here. I'm just, we're going to get some freedom. Yes. Yes. Amen. So I'm not apologizing. I'm just telling you what it is. Amen. This is God's message for today. The definition of meek: mild of temper, soft, gentle, not easily provoked or irritated, yielding, given to forbearance under injury. Now the man Moses was very meek above all men. Numbers 12, 3. Look what Moses did. Moses was an incredible man. God said of Moses, I speak to the prophets, but I meet with him face to face. Whoa! But you know, the character of Moses, and I, I mean, he was displayed in an amazing way Israel's acting up again and again and again and finally God is going to whack them. <laughs> He's had enough. I'm going to destroy them Moses and make a nation out of you. Moses falls to his face and says oh God don't do it. Don't do it. And he appealed to God for his character. Don't do it. Take me out of your book. How many would do that? Do you, you really? And God, that's, that, that description, when God said Moses was very meek above all men, that was a huge compliment for a person. Meek does not mean weak. Moses was not a weak man. How many know you've got about six million people you're leading? You, you're going to have to depend on God for what? <laughs> but you, you can't be. He, he was not a pushover either. Appropriately humble in an evangelical sense, it means submissive to the divine will. Not proud, not sufficient, not, not self-sufficient, not peevish and apt to complain of divine dispensations. That means are you complaining about what God sends you to do? Sometimes you've got to realize that, listen, if you acknowledge God in all your ways, and it says and he, will, he will ordain or order your footsteps, huh? That means sometimes you're in the middle of a mess because He put you there. <laughs> sometimes so you grow. Sometimes so you get some of that Egypt out. Amen? I know that's the way it's been in my life. Christ said, Learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. Without deliverance, there will be a root of bondage developed. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Romans 8.15 
scripture says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Freedom brings about responsibility and accountability. Yet those who operate with the Jezebel spirit will welcome responsibility, but listen, not accountability. You get that? Come on. Want to do things, but don't want to be told order on how to do it. They'll perceive accountability as slavery and avoid it like play. Sometimes when people start being called accountable or they know they're going to be accountable, they'll get up and run. Even from a teaching such as what we're doing now. Often individuals in the grip of this spirit are unable to sense their adoptions as a son or daughter of God. They feel isolated, uncared for. While striving to meet their own needs, they embrace a victim mentality because life owes them something. If they were given an extravagant gift, they exclude a lack of gratitude, feeling they deserve whatever was given to them. In fact, they always feel like that more should have been given to them. Come on. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened, Job 3.25. Fear, which is a lack of faith, opens the door for Jezebel spirit to enter an individual's life. A mindset of fear may begin in childhood. It continues as an individual soul gains rule and begins to control him or her. A spirit of fear, a mental stronghold of the soul, may lie to a young girl. It will whisper to her, I will protect you. Wow. Often when I do deliverance, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now. Okay? Say, Lord, Lord in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce, I renounce all protection, all protection from, any spirit from any spirit that is not from you. Not from you. I want no spirit protector no in, in Jesus, Jesus' name. Jesus. And I command all spirits that I've partnered with to protect my soul that will not confess Jesus as Lord without being forced to go now in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Get out on your spirit protectors. Get out of God's people in the name of Jesus. Just go. In the name of Jesus. Get out of them. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Spirit of fear gains its greatest influence in our weakest moments. Somebody might have told you there was a booger man in the closet. Put fear into you under the bed. That means a monster. In Texas, we call him the booger man. Well, my wife, he couldn't even. My, my wife called him. My wife's mom called him a booger, booger bear. And she she could not even sleep with her arm hanging off the bed until after, or her foot until after we we had been married and done deliverance. Mm -hmm. or, or deliverance was done. Do you follow me until that booger man was cast out? Mm -hmm. Fear of the booger man? Yeah. It's not a game. Yes. You should never, ever, anybody tell your child we're going to leave you at this store. Well, you know, booger bear was under there. Yeah, because yeah, that so, booger bear was real. It was real. Because her mom created it. Right. By giving a booger bear permission to bring fear into this child when yes. she was a child. You should never tell your child to use fear tactics. To tell, you, you better behave or we're going to leave you here. You're, you're going to scare your child. You're going to put fear in your child. You're going to put fear of abandonment in that child. If you've ever done that, say I'm sorry. It is. Yeah. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to, I'm not, I want to leave room for deliverance and get, get us out of time here. Jesus warned the church in the last days not to tolerate the spirit of Jezebel. Those who are operating in this spirit teach, beguile, and seduce others into immorality, false worship, and even idolatry. It is a major obstruction to restoration, revival, God's order, in the authentic faith. The working of the Spirit, it is behind abortion too, by the way. It's part of it. You hear me? It brings idolatry and immorality. Idolatry, I don't care what you think, God. I'm going to worship myself. 
I'm going to do what I want, and nobody gets pregnant outside of wedlock without immorality. Amen? And the vast majority of abortions are that case. There are, there are some married women that do it. How many know if you if you love God, you would never devalue a child in the womb? Not never. How many know there's forgiveness for those that have done that? Okay. We don't condemn them. We want them healed and made whole. And if you're in that room, God loves you and He'll heal you and make you whole. Jezebel is a master of web spinning strategies like a spider who spins a web to catch and hold her prey. The web is spun by winning the trust and confidence of those she wishes to control. The goal is to consume and destroy. Now remember, we're talking about this spirit using people. We are, we, people are valuable. Okay? Never forget you need to be an intercessor. Not a condemner. And if I get to condemning too heavenly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up acting just like what I'm condemning. If it's a given. Both the victim and the one operating in Jezebel must have their eyes open and fight their way out of the web with repentance, discernment, deliverance, counsel, and new habits. And Ahab cooperates with Jezebel by letting her have her way and not pursuing God, uh, his God-appointed destiny. All in authority, no exceptions, are her target. Discerning Jezebel in a Christian context. Jezebel operates in Christian families and organizations, but she still does, or the Spirit works in non-Christian organizations too. Jezebel has mastered the sophisticated ability to manipulate and control without physical force. She works undercover and behind the scenes. She draws power from fear and intimidation. I've done deliverance on an uh, eight-year-old girl one time, and she, and, I, and she would stare at me, and I kept wanting to turn my head. And about the third time, I was going, Lord, what is this? Well, she came from a line of Jezebels, both sides of her family. And that spirit was in that eight-year-old girl that was intimidating. I kept wanting to turn my head. I was going, why am I turning my head, Lord? <laughs> okay, I remember. All right. It has a lust for attention, promotion, and insists upon recognition. It appears to serve God but it is an inroad to establish the agenda and gain control. It plays religious game. It camouflages desire for control with religious talk. Frequently claims to have heard directly from God. Seeks teaching. Leader. Again, all things have to be discerned. Okay? So somebody can operate in three or four, or they may have 20 things that we're given signs of. And, but somebody can have three or four of these and it's the spirit, it's just not in but when it's in great levels of control you get the whole nine yards okay? frequently came to, who have heard directly from God seeks teaching and leadership position listen, anybody says I have a word for you I don't care, me, anybody here anybody you, try, you say okay, what's the word, you listen to the word and then you turn around and go God, if that was from you, I receive it if it wasn't, I do not and you, and the old old folks used to say they put it on the shelf. That means they put it up there to see if it. Oh, I'm open to you, God, but I refuse anything else. Test every spirit. Listen, Paul said, test everything and keep what's good. John said, test the spirit for the spirit of Antichrist is coming. We need to test everything. And if you're the one giving the word, you should want them to test it. And if you don't want them to test it, you need to repent for your pride. Hear me. It seeks teaching and leadership positions to gain stature, control, and organization. It searches the church and organization family members for allies in her conspiracy. A Jezebel spirit, a person operating out, will be the best friend of somebody in leadership. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Count on me. Count on me until the first correction comes or the first difference of opinion. And then that person will go from other person to person to person to person to person to, person to cre create a conspiracy to bring down whoever's in authority. To turn and whole bodies, churches split after because they don't know how to cleanse even their building or anything else. And Jezebel takes down the church and the next pastor comes, takes down the church and the next one that comes, so it's just a matter of time before it's going to happen again and again and again. And sometimes the enemy raises up Jezebel to come in, even as a witch, and then to come in and seduce the pastor. We know a church down in Houston area had about six or seven of them like that where the pastors kept falling sexually. Nobody knew how to cleanse the building. 
It relentlessly points out problems, often exaggerating, manipulates or disregards male le leadership. It resents credible men and women. It betrays others through knowledge of their personal lives and uses blackmail to create compromise. I'm going to tell y'all something. Male or female, you may not get fully healed. If you were hurt by a man, you may not be fully healed until you're able to let a man minister to you. And if you were hurt by a female, you may not be able to get fully healed because if you've got man-hater or woman-hater in your heart, you get me? I mean, seriously. We sit here and we have these chairs up here. This is, and I tell you, and some people may make their choices about whether it's male or female in that chair. And, or they may have a particular person. I'm going to tell you, I don't want anybody coming to me. Nobody, we want y'all going, we want you going to Jesus. So whatever chair opens up in the morning, go to that chair. Amen. Amen. If you're looking to us, you're going to be disappointed. It's about Jesus. Jezebel will sometimes feel elitist. Others are never good enough. Often knows the scripture well, using them for her, the benefit. Judges others by quoting scripture. Condemns them in the name of discernment instead of interceding for them. Many appear loyal and might volunteer for special service. Pretends to be submissive and humble to gain a strategic advantage. Hides from true repentance. May appear repentant but not from the heart. Maybe involved in sexual sin, sensual looks, have a seductive voice, stimulates, entices, persuades, provokes, sets up, stirs up, charms, manipulates, harasses. May be loud and bold. There may be quiet and cunning. May be positive or negative as needed. We we call it that we you know some people are sweet Jezebels and some of them are not so sweet Jezebels. Some can switch back and forth. Places blame and guilt on others to shame them. How many know Jesus paid for shame? Amen. Don't let anybody shame you. You know what the purpose of guilt is? The purpose of guilt is so you go, I'm guilty, oh God forgive me. It's, it's, it's purpose. Conviction tells you you've done something wrong. When you do something wrong, you go to the one that can fix what you've done and help you not do it again. Shame is, is meant to say, oh, this isn't right. Oh, God, here I am. But it's not meant to be a cloak you wear. And nobody has a right to put it on you. Right. Somebody says, shame on you. Even if, See, I talked about words the other night. Somebody says, shame on you. I said, no, I don't receive that. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. You hear me? It's a flippant thing. A lot of times people say there's, there's nothing really going on, but they just speak those words. But since we believe the Bible says that life and death is the death of life is in the power of the tongue, I'm not going to receive a death word. I love you, but I don't receive it. Uses either truth or lies to slander in order to destroy reputation. She uses partial truth. Seasoned with well-placed lies to spin a web of deception. May build up and then tear down. Compromises when necessary to get what is wanted. Changes opinion. May contradict. Keeps everybody off balance, not knowing how to take her. Uses emotions to advantage. May use silent treatment to advantage. Undermines self-worth and confidence in others. I'm going to tell you something. That spirit can work against a person, and that spirit actually do the harm and, and have such power in what it does is to make the person that had harm done be the one feeling guilty. And then when a person is getting undone by this spirit, and this spirit is it's using a human to undo them, and they're sitting there going feeling guilty for what that person has done, is what I just said. And then they're going, or and they're they're battling with why am I resenting this? Why am I doing it? And they're battling with all that, making them feel like that they're not even a good Christian when they're being attacked. Fear of the Lord is absence. It will enlist false witnesses. It works friends against friends and destroys relationships. Place one person or group against another. You know you've been Jezebel when fear comes. It brings insecurity, distrust, self-rejection. Fear projects fear. Just like it did 
who Elijah, he was intimidated. And if anybody operating in this spirit is challenged in any way, they're often very, very defensive. Ready to fight. Because flesh has to protect. If you build the God out of flesh, you'll fight for it. Alright. Come here, honey. Please. Amen. Alright. There's a whole lot here that we're we're just going to move by and we're going to start renouncing this spirit. Okay? So, and my sweetheart is going to take you through the renunciation. My sweetheart had an encounter with this spirit one time. Well, we've had a number of encounters, but this one was real personal. And uh, before she knew it, her blood pressure had gone through way high. It vexed her. But here we go. The Lord healed me. He did. I was healed. I got healed from the wound that the Spirit caused. Thank you. And I had to, there was already something in me or it wouldn't have happened. So the Lord showed us. I repented. The Lord, the Lord showed us. I repented. Got healed. And was stronger. I recognized it. It happened again. I got that. It, asthma manifested as a result of a wound created by us spirit that was, uh, I was being Jezebel. And even knowing, that's where we started this teaching, because we were go I was going through it. So it was personal to me. And so when, when I got it the second time, and asthma came in, it fear, it was fear came in. It was personal. I was hurt and wounded. And I was able to, in knowing what was going on even, repenting, repenting. And the Lord healed me. And I, I started praying for these people. Even the first time when it was something very, very personal to me was being held from me, something very precious that I wasn't able to see in the natural. And so it, I began having to pray for the person that was operating in that spirit, knowing that God loves that person too. So I can't be mad and hate the person but I hated the spirit, and I learned how to do warfare to the day. And I used to hate to be around someone operating in the Jezebel spirit because it was familiar. Today I can be around it, and I'm not moved by it. But I mean, I went through uh, a war in order to get there, but I overcame because of the Lord. So we're just going to renounce some things, if y'all, if y'all will, repeat after me. Father, today I stand before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, on behalf of myself, as well as on behalf of my ancestors. I plead guilty for the fact that I have allowed the Jezebel spirit with her five cords to work and rule through and over me, as well as that I have moved in the spirit of Ahab at times. I choose to submit myself under your almighty hand in order that you may lift me up again at the appointed time. I sincerely repent that I, through my lifestyle and behavior, have committed the following sins. Destroyed or opposed your true prophets. Destroy or oppose your ordained authority structures. Satisfied my own ego. Opposed the work of the Holy Spirit. And obstructed the flow of your spirit. Idolatry. Witchcraft, witchcraft, occult, occult emotional, manipulation, emotional manipulation, controlling behavior, controlling behavior rebellion, rebellion, walked after
after the desires of the flesh. Evoked the Ahab spirit in others. Allowed the Ahab spirit to manifest through me. Abused my authority and leadership. Distorted other people's words to look good myself. Distorted your words even by speaking in your name that which you have not really spoken. Opposed leaders to the women. This is the women speak this. I have undermined and opposed my husband, father, leaders, employers, and parents' authority. Now this is for the men. I have not treated my wife, family members, children, subordinates, parents, According to your precepts. According to your precepts. And I have not taken up. And I have not taken up. My responsibility. My responsibility. As priest. As priest. King. King. And prophet. And prophet. Now everybody. Lies and underhandedness. Lies and underhandedness. Putting blame and suspicion on others. Putting blame and suspicion on others. I have dominated. I have dominated. Intimidated. Intimidated. And manipulated. And manipulated. I have not obeyed your words. I have not obeyed your words. I have, I have through my behavior, through my behavior discouraged, others discouraged others from following, from following and, obeying you. and obeying you. Rebellion in all its forms in my life. Rebellion in all its forms in my life. Stubbornness. Stubbornness. Pride. Pride. Arrogance. Arrogance. Argumentative. Argumentative. Falsely accusing others. Falsely accusing others. Discouraging them. Discouraging them. Causing bitterness in them. Causing bitterness in them. In marriage. In marriage. Family members. Family members. Children. Children. And employees. Employees. And anyone else. And anyone else. Criticism, lies, and breaking down of others that I have allowed a desire for material wealth to influence me, to land myself and others in problems while ignoring the warnings of the Holy Spirit. Sexual immorality in all its forms. Manipulation through sex. I have transferred this spirit to my children and descendants. I have attempted to intimidate others with fear. I have followed tradition instead of revelation. I have followed law instead of the Holy Spirit. I have brought others into bondage. I have tried to control others through a religious mask, knowledge, secretiveness, works, long and empty prayers, unique experiences, and super spirituality, anger outbursts, and the confusion I have created as a result. That I have stepped on people to get what I want. Father, I ask forgiveness for all these sins. I stand before you today on the grounds of your mercy and the perfect work of the cross of Jesus. As well as a reconciliation that he has worked for me with you. On these grounds, I want to ask you today that you will cleanse these hands of mine from all these sins, even the sins that I haven't realized yet. Please cleanse my heart, Father. In the precious name of Jesus, I also stand before you and petition for every soul and the redemption of every other person.
person to my ever polluted with my behavior. I only ask for forgiveness for the fact that I have been a stumbling block to you. And I pray that you will remove this foul mantle that I have worn up to now. And clothe me with new clothes, fragranced with your love and acceptance. I ask forgiveness for the fact that I drank from the cup of Jezebel and that I have allowed the following to control me. Occultic spirits, compromise, idolatry through ignoring your discipline and not having respect for you, immorality, idolatry, domination, intimidation, manipulation, false religion. I now ask you to free and redeem me from these five cords with which this spirit of Jezebel has controlled me for so long. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for complete redemption through the name and the blood of Jesus, through the sword of your word and the word of my testimony, and they have overcome him by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. I also pray, Holy Spirit, that you will lead me on this new road and that you will help me in this process of renewing of the mind in all of these areas. I pray that you will take hold now of all the branching and infiltration and working of the Jezebel spirit in all parts of my body and so and pull it out of me until nothing remains in Jesus' name. I now address you, Jezebel, in the spirit realm. And I declare that I recognize that core of occult powers between you and your seat in my life, in, my life. In, others lives in others' lives that have affected me. Affected I now take the sword of the Spirit, the spirit and I sever this cord of the public power in the mighty name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. It, is it is written in 2 Samuel 22, 32 through 37. For who is God but the Lord? And who is a rock? Except our God. God is my strong fortress. He guides the blameless in His way. And He sets him free. He makes my feet like the hinds. He sets me secure and confident upon the heights. He trains my hands for war. So that my arms can bend the bow of bronze. You also have given me the shield of your salvation and your condescension and gentleness have made me great. You have enlarged my steps under me so that my feet have not slipped. I now address you, Jezebel, in the spirit realm. This is written twice. I confess to you, however, that in accordance with the way which they call a sect, the worship of God of our fathers, still persuaded of the truth of and believing in and placing full confidence in everything laid down in the law of Moses written in the prophets. And he replied to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. I now address you, Jezebel, in the spirit realm. And I declare that I recognize that court of immorality and idolatry. I now take the sword of the spirit and I sever this sword of immorality in the almighty name of Jesus. It is written in Revelation 19, 7. Let us rejoice and shout for joy. Let us celebrate and ascribe to him glory and honor for the marriage of the Lamb. At last has come and his bride 
declare, and I declare that I recognize your core of domination, domination, intimidation, intimidation and manipulation. manipulation. And I now take the sword of the Spirit and I sever the sword of domination, intimidation, and manipulation in Jesus' name. I now address you, Jezebel, in the spirit realm. I declare and I recognize the court of false religion. And I now take the sword of the spirit and I set it apart the false religion in the name of Jesus. God is a spirit. And those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I now declare a divorce decree to the spirit of Jezebel. A cancellation of all worship she ever received through me. My ancestors, my descendants, nullification of any and every covenant ever made with her. Renunciation of the Ahab spirit. In the authority and in the name. Jesus Christ, I now take this seat in myself and I hand it over to the kingdom of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you will remove the following curses and results and results due to my ancestors and my own involvement with the Jezebel spirit activities. Did you want to see this delivered Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Say, I break the curse. I break the curse. Of a bed of anguish and suffering. Suffering. Downheartedness. Curse of utmost judgment. Curse of utmost judgment. Curse of utmost judgment. Curse of death. Curse of humiliation and nakedness. Curse of slavery. Curse of senility. Curse of homosexuality. Lesbianism. Curse of cancer. Schizophrenia. Curse of divorce. Curse of female domination. Curse of male domination. Incest. Incest. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Curse of loss of Curse children. Of loss. loss of a marriage partner. Marriage. Curse of disasters Curse and evil. Disasters. Curse of witchcraft. Disasters. Curse of persecution. Curse. Take a deep breath. Every demon from these curses, every fallen in, in the name of Jesus, every spirit, every demon, every wicked spirit, every injurious spirit, every unclean spirit, and all of these, in the name of Jesus, go out from every one of these curses, every enforcer, go, 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 go. The Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. Every familiar spirit, go in the name of Jesus. Let God's people go in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go in Jesus' name. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Rejection. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, Jezebel. Get out in the name of Jesus. Along rejection, control, domination, intimidator, manipulator. In the name of Jesus. Come on, take a deep breath. Let them go. Go, 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 go. In Jesus' name. All occultic spirits. In the name of Jesus. Go, go, go. Everything from you, serpent authority. From any place. In the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You are good, you are holy, you are merciful. Come on out of them. Come on, rise up and come out now. In the name of Jesus. Manifest and come out. You're not going to hide. In the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Say, Lord, Lord if they're in me, they're in I want them out. I want them out. And I want every spirit, every defender, every hidden work of darkness, every demonic, 
demonic shield stripped and removed in Jesus' name. Now take a deep breath. Overloading wife, dirty story, pride, degradation, pornography, destruction of family, priesthood, pouting, get out, doubting manhood, passive quarter, get out, drunkenness, rebellious children, get out in the name of Jesus, emasculation, get out in the name of Jesus, rejection, emotional cripple, resentment, failure, scared, fearful, separation, divorce, fear of getting hurt, get out in the name of Jesus, sibling rivalry, go. In the name of Jesus, sluggish, sluggish, filth, stoicism, following sins of the Father, tragic mistakes, God of sports, get out, unemotional, God of jobs, get out, upset children, heavy spirited workaholic, get out, hatred of women, get out, accuser, accuser of the brethren, indecision, aggression, intimidation, attention seeking, insinuation, come on, take a deep breath, come on, get out of them. In the name of Jesus. Never worry about the one beside you. Never worry about the one beside you. Just deal with you and God. Arrogance, insecurity, child, inadequate, belittling, intellectualism, bickering, inhospitable. Go, go, go. Rash, bossy. Tell it, say, Lord. Forgive me for being bossy. Now take a deep breath, bossy. Get out of them in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Blackmail the bedroom. Get out. Lack of confidence, contention, lying, complaining, continuous complaint. Get out in the name of Jesus. Lawlessness, laziness, confusion, manipulator. Get out. Overindulgence, charming, nagging. Say, Lord, I repent for nagging people. I break that power of the nagging spirit. Take a deep breath. Get out. Get out. Dissatisfied. Pouting. Controller. Mind control. Psychology. Doubt. Philosophy. Disunity. All projected guilt. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Go, 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 go. Disruption. Retaliator. In the name of Jesus. Hurt. In the name of Jesus. Distrust. Inability to designate authority. Get out of there. Delusion. Rebellion. Demanding. Strife. Envy. Confusion. Every evil work. Slender. In the name of Jesus. Sorcery go. Sharp tongue go. Sensitive go. In the name of Jesus. Shame go. In the name of Jesus. Hard hearted. Get out. Spiritual blindness. False sickness. Hypochondriac, I break your power in the name of Jesus. Go, go, go. Hatred of men, hatred of women, hot temper, ugliness, hasty marriage. Get out in the name of Jesus. Hopeless, witchcraft. Get out. Hypnotic control. Go, 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 go. Irresponsible. Let God's people go. Take another brief deep breath and let's be done. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Say, Lord, I just want to be free. I want to be pleasing to you. I want a new default. Default will be, I do it your way. Not mine. Not my way. But yours. Your hope of God. My Father in heaven. Lord, I ask you to fill me. Raise your hands to heaven. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill them. Say, Lord, fill me. Fill me with the Spirit of Jehovah, of wisdom, counsel, life, understanding, knowledge, and the fear of Jehovah. Fill me with perfect love that cast out fear. Take a deep breath and let all the remaining fear that the Lord wants out today. All those spirits of fear come out of God's people. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of man. Come on, go, 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 go. Let them go in the name of Jesus. As your love pours in, all of that has to go in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I bless them today and I thank you for them. I thank you for your great deliverance. Thank you for your great love. And go ahead, anybody who wants to be healed in their physical body, let's just ask for it. Ready? If you want it, raise your hands. Say, Lord, my body needs healing. I'm submitted to you. And I'm thankful that I've been pulled off of Jezebel's sick bed. So now I ask you to heal me 
and as I've repented, I now command all spirits of infirmity to go. Now take a deep breath. Infirmity leave God's people in the name of Jesus anywhere you're at. Infirmity in their brain, in their bones, in their marrow, in their heart, in their lungs, in their liver, in their kidneys, in their spleen, in their bowels, in the name of Jesus, in their mind, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in their blood. Cleanse the blood, Lord, and mask it in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, make every crooked path straight, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that all snake venom be removed from their bloodstream in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you glory and honor. We speak healing. I speak healing. I speak healing and wholeness. I speak healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Reset anywhere that needs to be reset. Everybody put your hands in the back of your head. If you would say, Lord, I'm asking you to heal my hyperthalamus and reset me with your peace in the control center for all the hormones in my body. Thank you, Father, for your love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I guess we need to pray on the meal. Amen. You got something on? You say something. Yeah. Father, I just thank you. Now look, if you want to, say, Father, I give you permission to, to work in me. Perpetual deliverance. All of the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen.